Hello, Hello Tanya. Greg. We have to be COVID safe. So show me through your gorgeous studio. Welcome to my studio in Sydney, Australia. Come through. This looks very I'm Tanya Buchanan, the editor of House and Garden and Bell magazines, and today I'm delighted to be here with Greg Natale, a leading Australian interior designer and retailer and author and um, incredible designer. And we're lucky enough to ha be able to work through a masterclass with Greg today, a masterclass on creating a patterned interior. Greg's first book, The Tailored Interior, discusses how to put together an interior, much like putting together an outfit, but one of his big skills or his key skill is working with pattern in an interior. And I know a lot of people find that difficult and challenging. Uh, so today we're going to talk to the master about it. Well, thank you, Tanya. <laughs> when you're creating an interior, Greg, do you generally start with the walls in terms of pattern? Yeah, we do. We do start with the walls. And then and in the tailored interior, um, I, um, I broke that down. And the basic principles of design and decoration is really about layering. And the way we tackle it in the office is, first of all, we look at the walls, floors and ceilings. And then we go into that next level of like furniture, of sofas and um, coffee tables. And accessories. And, and then the last level is that micro level of, um, of accessories. Okay, so if we are starting with floors, walls, followed by ceilings, and then getting into the furniture and micro level down the track, tell us a little bit about choosing the wall coverings. Look, a lot of what we do in the office is we use a lot of wallpaper. And um, I've just launched a new line of um, wallpaper with signature prints. And um, I've got this laid out on the table. And look, wallpaper can be, it can be really subtle, like this, um, this pattern here, Tanya. This is, um, this is sort of one of my iconic- So this is a neutral. Yeah, this you, is a neutral. a neutral. And yes. it's, actually, it's actually probably um, one of our best sellers in, um, in the wallpapers. And this is one of our um, iconic patterns that we've re-released with signature prints. And so you felt the need to, I mean, you've worked with wallpaper for a long time and I know you've worked with signature prints and you did a lot of work with their Florence Broadhurst range years and years ago, but now you've developed your own range. And is this what you predominantly work with now or is well, it ever evolving? It, look, it's always evolving and we really do mix it up. You know, we use our own wallpapers and we also use, uh, you know, you know, other wallpapers as well. I know you you're know, a big fan of de Gournay. I am a big fan of de Gournay and that was featured on the second book, the patterned interior on the cover. But um, even within the wallpapers, um, you know, we're playing with like bold, you know, bold patterns as well. So, you know, this is someone who's a bit more bold. This is, um, this is actually a new pattern and the, um, the new wallpaper collection is Greco-Roman inspired. It was inspired by a trip um, that we did to Athens last year. And you can see in this room, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more bold. Okay, Greg, for people who can't necessarily hire an interior designer and they're not going to have your services, we've got people watching all over the world today, how do you suggest they start working on a room if they're looking at using wallpaper? Look, I think first of all is really look if you want something more subtle or if you want something more bold. So for this apartment that we did in New York, the children's um, um, bedroom was done in this very, very subtle um, wallpaper and then the parents' room was a bit more bolder. So this is my, um, this is my austeria, austeria pattern. And, it, and, and again, it was done uh, more subtle. And then this is actually a hotel that we did in the Hunter Valley where it was a bit more gold, it was, it was a bit more bold and, um, and it was white and gold. Shot, it's still it? soft. So I think you either go really bold like this, really bold like this, or you go more subtle. And in terms of working with wallpaper, I know you love it, and I think it's a great way for people to be able to transform a room quickly and quite affordably if that's all they're going to do. Maybe not so much in the case of the giant projects you're doing, but it does really bring an atmosphere and a different feel to oh, a room, doesn't it? it? Yeah, it instantly just brings mood to a room. That's why I love it so much. So then, I guess if we're starting with the walls, picking a colour here, we're going to run that colour through the whole scheme. Oh, definitely. So, you know, um, 
if we're working with a blue scheme, you know, we would definitely bring blue into the um, into the next um, level. So we, this is the like next a petrol, layer. Petrol blue here. And then we're going to run that through into, into the, rugs. the rugs. So we would definitely bring like, you know, one of the colors, um, you know, and tie it all back in. So this is, um, so these rugs are part of um, my latest collection, which is an Art Deco um, inspired collection, which is called Geo Deco. And then for example, you know, this is a- um, The motifs from the wallpaper work really well. But it's also, those. you know, it's also got the petrol blue, but you know, red and maroon really complement um, blue. So it's also about bringing complementary colors and now not just matching not colors. Now obviously you're not afraid of color. We're in color here today. <laughs> We're matching today. Um, how, people are afraid of colour. So that's what makes this, you know, all seem quite daunting um, when people are decorating. So what are your kind of rules around colour? Look, one of the really easiest way is to look at your own personal style. So, you know, I've got a lot of clients that love navy blue, they wear navy blue. So the navy blue is reflected into their houses. You know, um, do you remember Emma and Tony's house in Bellevue Hill? She loves coral, so then we had the coral um, run through the house. Yeah, had the right so coral run through the house. So do you get your clients to create a mood board of their style to show you, or you just pick up on things that they? No, love? no, they do. They do. There's some clients that create mood boards. There's some clients that you know create boards on Pinterest. Um, you know, we'll create a mood board for them. So when clients come to you now, you're happy to see their Pinterest boards and all of that. I love it. I'm like, share, share your, um, share and your. And the influences can come your th from anywhere, right? So it could be travel, it could be a car, they love an interior, some jewellery, a new outfit, it anything. Could, the, this, um, the starting point could be a piece of furniture. And I mean, you know, travel's a big one for me. And the story of themselves and what yeah. they would like in an interior. And then it's your job to translate yeah. it into this pattern. And you can see from, and you can see from already, you know, we've, um, you know, we've built the walls and now we're building the floors. the floors. So we've um so we've picked some rugs and So you've done your own range of rugs, but you've also done um I know you've produced carpets because there was a real missing gap in the market here, particularly yes. in Australia. Yes, for yes. More beautiful designed um wall to wall carpets. Yeah. yeah, and we just launched a new collection a couple of months ago of a new wall to wall carpet collection. Mm. Gorgeous. But okay. so so over here we've got like um all my signature geometric patterns, but um, a few years ago, I broke out into some more organic shapes and organic shapes and organic patterns really work when you've got, you know, a geometric um, interior. So you can see in this room, you know, we've got like wall paneling, which is very sharp. And then you've got, you know, this cabinet with a Greek key and then it's balanced beautifully with this organic um, rug. So you're, we're actually looking at quite a structured interior here. Per, yeah, that's right. So I feel like your interiors even though they look effortless, they're not. <laughs> I know that. But they're also, there's quite a structure to them. And then you add the other elements. And, and, Maybe and, that's what people need to and, you know, know. And, and, then, and then we'll talk about the, uh, more that lately, um, more, more later when we talk about cushions. But, you know, I feel it's really important that, you know, you balance out structure with mm. something that's a bit more free and, and, um, and organic. And you'll notice, Tanya, that we use a lot of round coffee tables in our work, because I think that, you know, just breaks softens up. Things. Yeah, softens the lines. Softens the structure. Do you think that, I know that one of your early influences and why you became an interior designer was television. It was. And watching film. It was. And watching shows like Dynasty. Yes. And, you know, they were film sets and sets and you walked in and I know you said you love living in an apartment because it's like living in a hotel. Yes. So do you feel you like a clean structure to begin well, with? Well, I do. Yeah, I do. I do. I do like a clean structure. And now... Um, you know, we're very lucky, you know, I have an architectural team and we, and we do everything from the ground up and, you know, and, you know, and, and we mold the, you know, interior architecture. That's the thing I think sometimes people, that's an interesting thing. Sometimes people don't get that there's a whole interior architecture. Well, there's a whole architectural team in this yeah. office now. And then there's the interior design. Designers, and then, and then there's the interior decoration. decoration. And that's how we're kind of- And now we've even got, and now we've even gone into product. Yeah. So we're designing our own product and, you know, accessories and all this sort of stuff. So it makes it a really bespoke interior and that's what everybody wants. They want their unique individual stamp on. Yeah, yeah I mean, I love interior. designing. I love designing everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. There's plenty to design. You know, um, Tanya, another great thing about a rug is that if someone does want to commit to a, a patterned wallpaper, you know, you know, a rug is something that, um, you know, can be swapped around. 
Um, you know, rugs have to get changed every five years. So it's somewhere that, you know, someone can really splash out in colour and pattern. add these gorgeous, vibrant colours yeah. without making a huge commitment and having the whole house yeah. wallpapered or yeah. yes it's a great portable gorgeous accessory like a piece of art really well yeah it's like art, art for the floor yeah it's like a Fashion piece of clothing it is oh yeah so these something that is more permanent when you go to rooms like the laundry um bathrooms bathrooms. bathrooms i love not forgetting the laundries because even though you do these well, incredible got, glamorous houses you do some really i've got um laundries. and i've got a laundry to show you guys today um so Tell us a bit about the, um, you've done some incredible stone and... Cement and this tiles. A, yeah, this is a cement range. So this is a cement tile. So this tile was actually developed for a client and it's a, um, it's a, it, um, it's a cube shape. And this is the bathroom here. And when you're working with pattern, what we like to do is also team it up with something that's just a bit more quiet. So with this bathroom, we actually put it with a black tile. Yeah, right, the walls were tile black. Yes. And even though we've been seeing a lot of black accessories coming through bathrooms, you don't often see a full black tiled wall, do you? But this just works so well with well, the glamorous gold accessories yeah. and the floor. You got it, you know, the, um, you know, the gold, um, you know, the brass really makes the, um, you know the black tile the pop, black. and it doesn't yeah. feel so heavy. This is actually for a child. This is actually a, ch a teenager's bathroom. That's believe very, it or not, that's a very, very sophisticated, sophisticated bathroom. It is. It's actually teenager. for teenagers. Very lucky. Um, this is our bathroom. This is our bathroom. Now so this is amazing. Now let's just let's just dissect this because I think this would frighten a lot of people. They would not know how to put this together. I mean, it looks incredible, but you've got on the floor, you've got like almost Gr a terrazzo. It's a, it's a green terrazzo. Green terrazzo. Then you've got. A, a veneer on the cabinetry. Which has all been saru, so you see the texture of the wood. So that creates a pattern in itself. And then you've got a geometric stone on the walls and then you've painted the ceiling maroon. Maroon, okay, so well, look, inspiration. The way, well, the way, look, the way it works is that everything on the walls is very neutral. You know, mm. this is a very, you know, this is a very subtle tile. It's a white on white tile. The vanity is white on white. And then, you know, we've got the bold um, color on the floor and the ceiling. Mm. So the floor and the ceiling really um, balance each other out. And then the maroon is seen in the rest of the apartment. Yeah. So that ties in the rest of the apartment. You were really bit 70s Studio Very, 54 influence. It was in 70s yeah. Studio 54. That's Rich. great. I just think this is such an excellent example that, you know, you can make different things work together, but you have to be obviously confident. And then you've got these amazing stools and accessories that just make it all work. And then laundries, I love, oh, you know, we love doing, um, you know, we love doing really fun and cool laundries. I mean, you know, we spend a lot of time in the laundry these days. So with this, um, with this laundry, we actually um, um, put a beautiful, one of my beautiful um, cement tiles on the floor. And then the rest of the laundry, you know, was quite Just light on white and very laundry like. And this kitchen that we're showing up here too. Now that just, when you look at it from a distance, looks quite very neutral and quite traditional, but um, with a bit of a retro feel. But then when you kind of drill down, there are some really amazing elements in there, like the um, geometrics on the floor, the Fornicetti plate collection. Um, and then there's even pattern within the joinery. And that's yeah. something, you know, that's something I'll talk about later is when you actually create pattern in joinery. What was the client brief there? The client brief was duck egg blue. She just loved duck egg blue and she had a collection of Fornicetti plates. Wow. Okay, that's great. And then, so that and, was the basis for her kitchen. And then you know, and you know, and you know, and and in Fornicetti patterns, you see a lot of arches. So that was the inspiration for the arches on the um, on all the cabinetry. Do a lot of clients come to you with something they have a collection or an artwork or a piece that they want to and, build and, their interior and around? And even if they don't, I really, you know, I draw something out of them because we really need. You know, there needs to be a starting point. You know, the starting point could be the house. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, often the house is the muse. Um, is, is renovating or refurbing or redoing a house, do you think, more is easier than a new house? Um, you know, Tanya, it really, just, it really just depends. Mm. It really just depends. You know, it is fun when you're creating a new house because, you know, you can create the planning from scratch yeah, and you can really carve everything out. But, you know, um, these days when we're renovating, you know, we're moving walls and moving structure and everything. Sometimes it's good to have some constraints. It is. Yeah. 
Okay, that's great. Now this is a giant, this is a so, new tile you're doing. This is a giant tile. So this is something really new that I wanted to show you guys. I'm working on a jumbo range where, you know, at the beginning, you know, we were doing, um, you know, we we're working on the tiles that were sort of a lot smaller and more mosaic. And now and we've- These are still, you still do these. These are all still yeah, available. Yeah, these are all available from Terra Nova. So yep. this is something new. So this started out as actually a custom tile. And this is a house that we're doing this in Mossman. And it's now it's beautiful. going to become part of a range that I'm working on with Terra Nova. Mm. And then, um, Tanya, this house is not finished. I, um, I don't have the finished um, photos to show you, but, you know, I want to show, you know, all the viewers here. You know, this is how we create a mood board. Mm. So it's all storyboarded. Amazing. Yep, yep. And how nice when you're having your house worked on to be able to look at all of these. And these then, are like little outworks. And then what themselves. we did uh, actually in the bathroom, in the in the ensuite, we actually uh, blew this up again to jumbo jumbo level. And that's for the floor. That's for the floor in the uh, that's for the floor in the powder room, which is off this room. Amazing. Okay. And then and then and then, then, here, and then uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, no, 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 no. And then lastly, just like I did with the um, rugs. Um, I created an organic collection because mm. I like mixing, you know, the, you know, really the stru structured, structured yeah. with something organic because I think it just breaks up the work. And, you know, this was done with, um, you know, we released this a few years ago with Bazaarza in Italy. Mm. And, um, and I also really pushed their capabilities because, you know, they don't do a lot of these sort of shapes and they were, they were really open to it. And you can see with this, you can see with this bathroom, um, you know, we've used my moray pattern, but then, you know, we've... Is that a moray pattern stone or a, a wallpaper? Silk. Silk. It's more, this was in, this was actually inspired by silk. Right. So it was actually okay. creating silk with... Um, wow, that's like a combination between a dressing room and a bathroom. It like is, a isn't it? a room and a bathroom. But, you know, the reason this image works so, much, um, so well is that, you know, we've got the terrazzo, which, you know, has a little bit of pattern but is also, you know, just calms the whole scheme down. Mm, you, it's like a neutral. And then, um, and then um, this is the um, signature pattern of the collection, which is inspired by Malachite. And this bathroom was actually, um, is actually in my studio, which is downstairs. That's gorgeous. And so that's, that, that was another bizarre. That was another bizarre piece as well. So again, again, you know, just rounding all that off, Tanya, um, you know, the organic, um, you know, balances out the structure and it's sort of like a circle and a square works so well together, you know, and we play a lot with that, um, with the, you know, in the next um, stage that we talk about, the next layer. But the everything next layer. that you have here could work together. It's really interesting. It's well, it sort is of an a, evolution of your style, but all the pieces could work Well, together. it is all, you know, you know, everything's designed to work together, the tiles and the rugs and the wallpapers. You know, it's all how you balance it, you know, mixing, um, you know, circles and squares and, you know, clean lines and organic lines. Oh, that's great. And what about um, any tips just before we move on for young or starting interior designers. I mean, they must just look at all of this and think, wow, I'm never going to have um, a wallpaper rug tile, everything collection. How do I start? Look, How do I get my look, I think for, signature look? Look, I think for young interior designers, they have to really um, find their own style and work out who they are. But and, they need and, to work for someone first, don't you think? Well, look, I, look, I, um, I think that's important. You know, I worked for, um, you know, I worked for you know, um, several different companies um, when I first started. But, you know, I think it's really important to find your own style and, you know, look at your own influences. Like, you know, um, Tanya always gets a chuckle about, you know, my TV and film yeah, um, influences. influences. But, you know, look for those influences that really make you who you are. You know, a big influence that, you know, I worked out in the padded interior is my parents' house that they built in the 70s. Mm. The Natali house had pattern tiles on the floor in every room. And at the time, I hated it, yeah. but now but, I love it and, so and it's much. it's all made its way through everything you do now. Yeah, so, so you know, um, you know, without me realizing it was a really big influence, but you know, I do love it now. Mm, that's amazing, yes. Everything sort of shapes who you are. All right, now I always talk about the fifth wall. The fifth wall is actually the ceiling, Tanya. Yes, right, the ceiling. Yes, now, now a lot of ceilings are neglected. They just get the white. The coat of white and that's it. So, well, look, you know, a really, um, a really easy way is to add paneling. 
yes. to a ceiling. Which you've done in quite a few of these. So, you know, these two said so this is a beautiful home in Bellevue Hill and this is another beautiful home in Brisbane that you actually ran both houses. And, you know, these become just more subtle, they become more texture. And this is when we were playing with squares as a pattern. And for the really brave person, Tanya, is wallpaper. You and can put wallpaper on a wallpaper, ceiling. Yeah, you can put wallpaper on a ceiling. And what but this was still done very this, texturally, though. This adds atmosphere, right? This adds mood. It adds drama. Yeah, it does add mood and drama. Mm. And then in our own place, in our own place, you know, um, just to break up the, um, the you know, the um, simple ceilings, you know, we just added a really clean um, circular coffer. And, you know, and that just becomes a pattern in itself. And what are, I want to know um, some of the, you know, happy comments and happy clients and, you know, what they say when they well, come. Well, you know what, you know what everyone, you know what everyone always says, believe it or not, Greg, you really listen to us and thank you. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And I just can't imagine having something that's so beautifully planned and structured to live in. I remember one of your clients, the houses that we ran in Bell, and we actually had an event there and they loved it because it was like a mini hotel. They felt like they were on holiday every day. So. And we're actually redoing that house, yeah. Tanya. Where, um, the, the, so the client um, has sold that house and we're actually redoing the house for the new so owners at the moment. Going. It's just, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's cycle. amazing. And I'm excited to be able to reinvent that house. Okay, so in here, we're really talking about a lot. We've got really strong motifs on the ceiling and the floor, which kind of match. They mirror well, they, each they, other. They, they mirror each other. And then... Um, is that a... It's, um, it's timber panelling on the walls. Okay. And so it's a bit more work. subtle. Okay, this is incredibly... Is that a Del Frank? Yeah, it is a Del Frank. Okay, so that is, um, you know, an amazing Australian artist and very vibrant and working with a painting like that is tricky in itself. But you can see where, but you can see why I did... I used the Del Frank. And it's, you know, it's the same of, of, of what we've been doing here is, you know, balancing the geometric and the organic. So the... Del Frank becomes this beautiful organic pattern and it balances out all the structured shapes in the rest of the room. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Now, this was this in the Astor? That was in this the Astor. In yeah, I, in a beautiful 1920s building. Yeah, it's, it's, actually, it's actually one of my favourite projects. And this is now where we get into that next level, which is furniture. So we've discussed the walls, floors and ceilings. So we've got that layer right of the interior architecture. And now we're going into that next layer, which is the big pieces of furniture. Which, which you, normally you would keep neutral, but there's always an exception yeah so look so we look we because we use so much pattern in you know you know in the interior architecture layer i do tend to um um stick with like a um a clean sofa with not much pattern but we, we do like breaking out with a feature chair so this is a um this is a house that i did in oklahoma and this had a south west feel and you know the sofa the sofas are black um and so you know they're more they're more, more simple. Upholstery and texture on their but then we, but then we've yeah. got the feature chairs. And in this apartment now, this obviously you've incorporated some art that the owner had because it's more traditional. Well, the, well, that it. was the starting point. The art. Yeah. And then um, were these piece, furniture pieces that she had, or this was look, more new? Look, look, um, the client actually had the sofa, but I I did the sofa with them in the last. In, the, in their last apartment, but then this is where we break out with the feature chair. So normally, you know, my general rule is, you know, stick to a really clean, plain um, fabric for, uh, for a sofa. But then if you want to break out, you know, then do a really cool feature chair. And also the, um, the rug here is a geometric, which is you wouldn't think to put well, I would, not many people would think to put a geometric in this kind of traditional apartment, but it works really well. Well, it does work. And then, and you can see, you can see what we've done here is how the, again, it's always playing with the, you know, you know, with the opposites of like, you know, organic and geometric, where the feature chair here is in a more organic, organic padding. Yeah, with the geometric. Okay, now this, this house, which is a gorgeous uh, house at, at Hamilton, Hamilton Island, Island, which we won. Yes. The Reader's Choice Award a couple of years ago at the yeah, Bell Awards. Yeah, amazing. And But look at the... Okay, now I can't even imagine working this out because the rug looks like crazy paving and then there's a tropical motif on the sofa and then real texture on these armchairs and then the panel, timber panelled ceiling. Well, look, the way this works is that we really stuck to two colours. So um, the walls and floors and ceilings are actually all wood. That's what the client wanted, a, a, um, a tropical feel. Yeah, and it's so got a seven, again, a 70s It's very 70s. Here. It yeah. is very 70s. So 
we stuck to two colors, which was the olive and then and the, and the blush pink. Um, but then this is actually exceptions to the rule where we did have a patterned sofa because everything else was so simple. The walls, floors and ceilings were just rosewood. Yes, yeah, and then that's really... And then, th and yeah, then that was the pattern. And it really suits the surroundings but, uh, too. But, uh, and, uh, as I said, there's always exceptions to the rule. But my, but my general rule is keep the sofa clean. Okay, now we look at doing, you know, injecting pattern here in furniture in this kitchen. You've kept it pretty simple with a pattern splash bag, but then brought in the motif on the furniture chairs. Yeah. So now, so now we start getting into, um, you know, um, you know, coffee tables and side tables and dining tables. So you know, we've done the interior architecture. We've picked the sofas and the chairs, and now we're getting into that next layer. Mm. So in here, we've actually used pattern in the wood. So in this kitchen and this lounge room, we've used a burl timber. Yes, gorgeous. So, you really know, patterned. so, yeah. you know, it's a subtle, you know, it's a very, very subtle texture, but then, you know, pattern can be in furniture. And are they this vintage is, pieces? No, nah, they're actually new. New, okay. I mean, they're vintage inspired, but they're, they're by Jonathan Adler. Yeah. Um, they're actually vintage inspired, but they actually are new. And then with, even with my new shop in Potts Point, um, you know, all the beautiful tables are made out of marble and that marble is, you know, is a pattern itself. So that's a really gorgeous, um, sophisticated interior in your shop, and that's in, in inner Sydney for anyone watching from overseas. And you've, but you've also created uh, layers with the the amazing wall finish. You had an artisan do the walls. So the, yeah, yeah, so the walls are all polished plaster, so they're all really architectural. And then we continued the same finish on the column and the ceiling. And then you know one of my signature tiles on the floor which matches the same marble of the side tables so there's a lot of pattern there but it's very it's very subtle, subtle and it's it's really gray polished. it's gray so the product doesn't fight against the interior architecture that's great now here now this is this a this looks that's like a bar fantastic bar in someone's house so that's, that's a bar great. so this is when you know the um you know the pattern is in the material which is the marble splashback creates the um creates the pattern that's great yeah and also so does the whole lineup of wine becomes like an artwork in itself and this it? is um and um bell's pub and this is this is going into the next issue of bell tanya okay that's <laughs> excellent okay great look all these houses we we've, we've We've run in one magazine or another. Okay, now this is a project you did many years ago, but um, in another um, suburb of Sydney, which is on the water, Balmain. Yeah. And, and look at this little nursery. I it's visited gorgeous. this house many years ago. And it's gorgeous. Thought. And this is where you can create pattern in the joinery. Mm. So we had this circular motif um, in, the, you know, in the cabinetry, and then we continued it into the nursery. Yeah. And then, um, and then um, this house is where we actually create it again in the cabinetry. So the bar and all the cabinets, um, the pattern is in the, is, is in the in cabinet. The actual yeah, it's in the joinery. That's great. That is amazing. But yeah, that takes real skill. So, you know, you're probably not going to do that so much. But, you know, but, you but know. again, but again, you know, if you, you know, if you now understand, you know, we've, you know, we've, um, you know, we've done our walls, we've done our floors, we've done our ceiling. So that layer's done. Now we've picked sofa, we've picked chairs and now we've picked tables. Yes. So now we're ready for the smaller layers like the cushions. Right. Okay. Now this is a cushion range of yours and this is new yeah. that we launched a couple of months ago and i liked how you described this to me because i was saying people also um get a bit worried about how to layer cushions on a sofa and here you've done the geometric the pattern and the organic the, in yeah. every shade yeah. so they they work back together so this time so this time with this story you know we design sorry this time with this um cushion collection we designed it in stories so you can see in the black story, there's the geometric, there's the plain, the organic, and even in the pink, there's the geometric, the plain, and then the beautiful organic. So, you know, it's a lot easier um, to place together. And then also these colors can be mixed together. Mm. So, you know- and This is another great way to refresh an interior, really. This is a really Quickly super easy and way. Like the rug, you know, like the rug situation, new cushions, you can do that on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> That's easy. Um, well, you've done all the work for everyone because you've worked out a whole colour story here. Okay, now going into the next level. Now you, uh, so this is where we get to the gorgeous end part of like when you're shooting for a magazine, it's in the styling and when you're setting up your own home and moving in once you put everything away. 
Um, it's these lovely flourishes and collections that really make everything pop. And you have designed um, a whole lot of pieces. Well, you know, the next thing to finish a sofa, which is a throw. So this is um, so this is a new um, throw, which is um, made out of a packer, which is yep. just gorgeous. gorgeous. And this yep. is more bold. This is more but bold. But still a neutral, so it's not too, you know. It's great. Yeah. People are like people would embrace this because well, it's bold, but it's still a neutral. Well, you know, black and white really is our neutral. And then, you know, for the more subtle, you know, for something more subtle, this is where we've actually turned our story of pattern into towels. Mm, that's great. And great then you the can texture. see, you can see in this, you can see in this, um, you know, beautiful bathroom where you know the towel is just something subtle, but it's just a texture. Mm. Yeah, it's just quiet and, luxury. And then this is this is for you know something really really super subtle where the cuff of the um, of See, you know this is of the bed linen. 70s. Yeah, this isn't is Studio it? 54. Yes, I yes, love it. Yes, gorgeous. So this is you know really subtle where it's just on the cuff. Okay, now you've done a lot of work with um, marble, stone, brass. Um, and these, are, this is your accessories line. So yeah, tell us about a little bit about designing these pieces. Well, look, I mean, you know, this is really the final layer now. So you know, um, you know, we've gone right through into you know the cushions and the throws, and then this is what really finishes everything off. So this is what goes on the coffee table. And you know, I always like doing things in three or fives. Mm -hmm. So for a side table. You know, I like having um, I like having threes and mixing all the metals. And uh, sorry, size mixing too. the materials yeah. and size and height, mm -hmm. mixing all the uh, materials. So um, this is this is um, our accessories line, which I have in my which I have in my store. And you know, we like working with different materials like marble and brass and lacquer and acrylic mm. and What's ceramic. That? And then for a coffee table, I like to have five. I think five always works. Yep. And we also balance it out with some books. Yeah, great. Your books. Well, my books. <laughs> and some others. Yeah. And, and some, some other books. Some others. And, okay, now tell us a bit about just this, this final flourish here. You know, that's a tricky thing. We've got a shot there of, um, it's actually in your office. But, it is, um, which, which we'll be doing our Q&A. Um, our Q&A, no, In the but, office. But colour blocking and styling books and collections, that's a tricky thing for a lot of people. Yeah, so, so you know, I always get asked this, how do you style a bookshelf? Um, not in genre, in colour. In colour. Okay, so, so colour block your... Some people who are purists. You know, purists and yeah. Colour block your books, that's a really that easy way. the literati, but yes, yeah, they look gorgeous. <laughs> um, um, you know, and these are my sort of final, um, you know, you know, my final um, do's and don'ts. So um, I always find Tanya, if um, a dining room doesn't have a rug, it never looks finished. Mm. So these two, um, you know, gorgeous, you know, dining rooms, which are in an open plan space. And you know, now these days, um, we all live in an open plan open space. Plan. So they kind of delineate the space. And they don't anchor they? the dining table. Yeah, they take you to a new area. Yeah. And for the really, really brave people is put wallpaper on your ceiling. Mm -hmm. So in our own apartment and in the and, and the kitchen in New York, we put wallpaper on the ceilings. Now, how do the little wallpaper hangers do that? They have to lie down on scaffolding. <laughs> they get it. scaffolding and ladders <laughs> and, you know, they're up there. <laughs> okay, that's great. And then lastly, lastly, is um, a really easy way, if you're afraid of pattern, is actually putting pattern in your artwork. And even in our own place, the pattern becomes the artwork. Now you love art, and I a do lot love of art. people find it difficult to and have I, an art collection. Are you happy it's, to it's, help them with that? I, I am, and art is really not that easy. I think that everyone takes art too seriously um, because they think it's such a big investment, but people spend more money on a sofa yeah, um, and a rug. So and I think with art, it really needs to suit your space. Mm. Um, you need to look at things that you really like. It doesn't have to be that hard. And um, my advice is don't take art too seriously. And I think also just supporting artists and you know, the whole you know, kind of crafts you know, sector is really good because these things are handmade and they take a lot of time well, and well, you're actually not spending a lot on them. Well, for me, for me, that really final layer and um, is, is, is once you've got the artwork on that wall, that's when the interior is finished. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Tanya. That's excellent. Thank you.